What's up, everybody? Welcome back to <clears throat> it's kind of the conclusion, the outro commentary uh, for Saving Private Ryan Part 3. Uh, hopefully you're getting into this movie. I know I love it the whole way through. Like I said, it might be my favorite movie of all time. Uh, and if not, it's right up there in the mix. Uh, so hopefully you're enjoying it, too. So today you saw some pretty intense fighting. Um, as you know, they, they first part, they're moving on. They uh, got a lead as to where they think Private Ryan and his unit are located. So they're making their way through Normandy, going to this bridge that uh, his unit is supposed to be at and securing or holding the bridge. Uh, and they're hoping to find him there. On their way through, they come across a German machine gun nest that is kind of hidden. Uh, they're able to spot it, but it's kind of in a hidden location. Uh, so they have the option. They could either just go around and bypass it, or they could try to take that machine gun nest out. Now, obviously, Captain Miller makes the decision, we're taking it out because he's worried that the next unit of Americans that comes through there a day or two later will get sabotaged, ambushed, and a lot of their guys will get killed by these German machine gunners. Um a lot of the soldiers in his unit are not too hepped up on doing that. They feel like it's an unnecessary risk. Now, I think in real life, they're typically, from all the stories I've heard from the American army from back in this era, there probably was, wouldn't be a whole lot of back talk. You, usually enlisted guys didn't question officers. Uh, but in movies, you know what I mean? To have some drama and tension, ah, it plays well and it builds up, you know, the the, the cinematic, you know, tension and all that. So, they're not too happy about doing that, but the captain gives the orders and that's that. They're, they're taking out the machine gun nest. Now, while they're storming that and, and taking out using some grenades to get that machine gun nest taken out, um, their medic, Wade, gets shot right through the liver too, which having one of your organs hit, that's a bad shot to take, especially in the gut too. Um, Usually it's very painful. And also if a major organ is hit, generally you bleed out pretty quick. So you see that powder they were putting on Wade's belly, that was to clot the wound and to stop the bleeding. Uh, of course, his was too intense and the, and the powder just wasn't going to cut it. Um, then you also see they take those little like thimble looking things with a needle at the end and stick it into his leg. That's battlefield morphine. Um, <clears throat> the medic, so Wade would have had that on him because he was the medic. If you come across a guy that's been injured in horrific pain, you take one of those, stick it into him, push it. And it gives them a shot of morphine, which is kind of like heroin, basically. It's an opiate or opioid, um, and, and it would dull the pain and calm them down. So they give him the last of the morphine they have because he's injured really bad, and, and they knew he there was no fixing him out in a battlefield like that. Maybe if you had a surgeon ready to go, even then it would probably be a long shot for a, a wound like that. Now, that German machine gun nest had three German soldiers Two of them get killed in the attack. One is taken as a prisoner of war. Um, what do you do with a guy like that? Because, you know, if it was the whole army group, the whole division coming forward and you had hundreds or thousands of men, well, then it's a no brainer. It, when German soldiers surrender and you disarm them, you're going to shuffle them to the back of the lines. They're going to put them into a little prison camp. And that's where you'd put all of the enemy POWs. But of course, these guys are cut off behind German lines and they don't have contact with the rest of the American army. So just the small group of them, they can't take POWs because they need all of their guys to be very mobile and be ready to fight. And if you take a POW, at least one guy is going to have to be babysitting him and watching him the whole time. Um, so kind of a moral and ethical dilemma there. And then I think second moral and ethical dilemma is <clears throat> they end up deciding that they are going to release him. Of course, you seen that part of the movie. They're just going to trust him to go turn himself in. He's probably not going to do that, but um, the, the captain didn't want that on his conscience, just killing, uh, just executing an enemy soldier. Um, then you have some major back talk where Private Ryben, as his name, questions the captain's order and says he's not doing it anymore, not following orders. He's checked out and done with this mission. Uh, and Sergeant Horvath pulls a pistol out and basically says, you are going to follow orders or we're going to shoot you. Now, <clears throat> Captain Miller is able to defuse the whole thing. He And I also found it interesting that in the movie, he's essentially Mr. Spink. He was a ninth grade, you know, an English composition teacher who coached baseball and stuff, which Mr. Spink used to coach baseball. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Yeah, he says, that's what Spink would be if we had another great war like this. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, anyway, my question, the ethical dilemma is there. Now, 
Captain Miller diffuses the situation, but if he had not done that, would the sergeant have been justified in shooting Private Rybin uh, for not following orders in a combat situation? Mm, kind of an interesting thing to, to think about there. Uh, anyway, those two little ethical dilemmas that I laid out are going to uh, tie into today's Q&A post. So make sure you go tune into that after this uh, and respond to it. Finally, just wrapping everything up for this chunk of the movie, after the whole incident there with the POW and the machine gun nest, they they end up <clears throat> taking out a German tank, and there's some other American soldiers from the Airborne over there that fire a rocket launcher at it, uh, and they link up, and lo and behold, one of those guys is James Francis Ryan from Iowa. Uh, so they piece it all together. This is the guy they're looking for. They end up linking up with these guys and talking to them. Um, think, put yourself in Private Ryan's shoes. He is just told by Captain Miller that all of your brothers have died. Three of your brothers, which is, he only had three, uh, have all died in combat and that it's our mission to take you back home. Man, he'd feel like he's lost almost everything at that point. Um, and, and also his point is that, hey, the only brothers that I still have left are these guys that I'm holding this bridge with, my brothers in arms, the guys that I'm in combat with, which that might seem like a stretch, but none of us have ever experienced combat before. And I'm, but I have read a lot about soldiers that have, and it, it's a very common thing for guys that are in the same unit, especially if they're in combat, uh, to really view each other as brothers, and that that's the most important thing. Uh, taking care of the guy next to you on either side, uh, that you really do get very intense bonds like that. So I can kind of see and get myself in Private Ryan's head that, hey. He doesn't want to leave those guys. He wants to stay true to the mission that they've been assigned to, and he wants to stay there and, and hold that bridge that's super important. Uh, Captain Miller and Sergeant Horvath talk about it, and then pff, after a long discussion, they end up deciding, all right, I guess we're going to stay here, and we're going to try to hold this very important bridge. And I'll talk about that in tomorrow's commentary, uh, why bridges were so important at that stage of the war. But they decide that, hey, we're going to stay here. We're going to try to do our best to save Private Ryan and hold and just hope to God that the American army breaks through before the German army gets to him. Um, because if the American army breaks through, it'd be mission over and that's that. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed the first three parts of the movie. Uh, tomorrow will be the conclusion to it. And I think this movie has a very strong, just kind of awesome ending to it. Um, honestly, probably the end of this movie is my favorite part of it. So hopefully you've been enjoying it too. See you back here tomorrow.